Well, hey guys, in today's video, we're going to talk about the possible reasons you have dry skin. I have a ton of videos on the best skincare products for dry skin, best moisturizers for dry skin, what ingredients to look for. But in this video, we are gonna do a deep dive into the possible reasons behind dry skin, because in many cases, addressing the root cause can get you a lot of relief far beyond scouring the drugstore shelves looking for the perfect product. Dry skin refers to skin that, well, feels dry to the touch. It occurs when skin is lacking moisture in the topmost layer, the stratum corneum. Dry skin is secondary to abnormalities in the integrity of the skin barrier. An escape of more water. Dry skin starting in early childhood may be one of about 20 different dry skin conditions known as ichthyoses. I have a video all about this condition, so if you know you have that and you're looking for more insider tips, check that video out. It's called ichthyosis because the scale looks like fish scales. Oftentimes, these people will have a family history of dry skin. Dry skin is very common in people who have atopic dermatitis. With atopic dermatitis, there is a problem with the barrier, and as a result, the skin is prone to losing water and irritating things penetrating the skin, causing flares of itchy rashes. Anyone over the age of 60, very likely to have bouts of dry skin. With age, the stratum corneum's ability to hold onto water declines, barrier function declines, we're a lot more vulnerable to losing water from the skin. And with women post-menopause, as estrogen levels decline, the skin's ability to retain moisture also declines. Hypothyroidism. Turns out thyroid hormone is really important, well, in a ton of processes throughout our body, but it's very important in regulating the turnover of the epidermis of your skin. And one of the presenting findings is very dry skin, especially on like the arms, the legs, the palms and soles can have very thick, cracked, dry skin. I have a video on the skin findings of hypothyroidism. As you'll recall from that video, people who have hypothyroidism, not only is their skin very dry, but they also have very pale skin. Their extremities are very cool. With hypothyroidism, you also have a decrease in the activity of the sweat glands. Addressing the underlying thyroid disease is key. And once that is addressed, well, then the dry skin can improve substantially. Of course, moisturizers and dry skin care is really important, but the most important thing is addressing the thyroid problem. If that's not fixed, I mean, forget about dry skin. You've got a lot more at risk. Thyroid hormone is so important. Kidney disease, specifically end-stage renal disease. Dry skin is the most common skin finding in patients who have end-stage renal disease. Kidney disease that requires you to go on dialysis or have a kidney transplant. If you are experiencing dry skin for the first time, don't panic and assume that your kidneys are failing. You would know if you had kidney disease before the dry skin appeared. About 50 to 85% of patients who are on dialysis have very dry skin. And the dry skin is very rough, it's very scaly, it's often localized on the arms and legs. Similar to ichthyosis, the hereditary dry skin conditions, the acquired dry skin that comes with end-stage renal disease appears ichthyotic. It has that fish scale appearance. Why patients on with end-stage renal disease get such dry skin is difficult to say for sure. It's been demonstrated that they have decreased sweat gland activity as well as atrophy of the oil glands. There's probably some abnormality in barrier function and a lot of patients who have end-stage renal disease, they've been on a lot of diuretic medications that can certainly contribute to dry skin as well. There's likely a problem with the natural moisturizing factors in the skin of patients with end-stage renal disease. Malnutrition definitely can cause dry skin. Now, when it comes to malnutrition, it's very rare for somebody to have an isolated vitamin mineral deficiency. More often than not, people who are malnourished have multiple different uh, deficiencies going on at once. So there can be some overlap in findings. Uh, malnutrition specifically related to dry skin, what comes to mind is essential fatty acid deficiency. Essential fatty acids are fatty acids that you can't make. You have to get them from your diet. Up to one quarter of the fatty acids in the stratum corneum are essential fatty acids. So they're really important for barrier function. People at risk for essential fatty acid deficiency would be low birth weight infants, patients with cystic fibrosis, people who have inflammatory bowel disease, or people who have had intestinal surgery. Another vitamin deficiency that can give you very dry skin is vitamin A deficiency. Not super common. Uh, patients more at risk for this would be someone like a patient with cystic fibrosis who can't absorb the fat soluble vitamins very well. Vitamin A, as a reminder, is a fat soluble vitamin. Patients who have vitamin
vitamin A deficiency. They have a very characteristic dry skin called Phrenoderma. Dry bumps with a plug of rough stuff over the hair follicle, over the pore opening. I have a video all about the skin findings of vitamin A deficiency, so check that out. We go over more things in that one than I can in this video. Patients who have cancer can have dry skin. It's a lot more common in patients who have cancers of the blood, leukemias, lymphomas, multiple myeloma. But cancer patients also commonly develop very dry skin secondary to the medications that they are on for their cancer, whether it be the chemotherapy that they're taking to treat the cancer, or maybe some other medications that they're taking to manage side effects can dry out the skin. Treatments like radiation therapy can leave the skin quite dry. Primary skin conditions that can have dryness, we already mentioned atopic dermatitis, keratosis pilaris. I've got lots of videos on this channel about that. Basically dry skin that centers around the hair follicles, so you get these rough bumps. It's a chronic dry skin condition, it comes and goes. It can be itchy, uncomfortable, cosmetically it bothers a lot of patients. You also can have very dry skin with contact dermatitis. Maybe you're coming in contact with something that you're allergic to, allergic contact dermatitis. For example, on your eyelids, touching your eyes, you develop an eyelid dermatitis with dryness and flaking there. Or maybe you developed an irritant contact dermatitis. Uh, basically irritation uh, of the skin that's come in contact with something that's, well, irritating. And pretty much anything can be irritating depending on what it is how long you've been exposed to it, how frequently you've been exposed to it, and the concentration, and the area of the body where the skin is being exposed. Some areas are more vulnerable to irritation, like the delicate skin of the eyelids, versus like the skin of your back, which is super thick. Common irritants, you know, you've got skincare products can certainly be irritating, especially exfoliants, hydroxy acids, retinoids are super irritating in the beginning but also things that you come in contact with in your environment. Household detergents, cleansing agents that you use to wipe down your bathroom, laundry detergents, sprays, things that you come in contact with at work, through your occupation, touching things that may be irritating in the skin, you don't even realize it, washing dishes by hand, prolonged exposure to water, saliva, lots of things can be irritating to the skin and they can leave the skin dry, itchy. Many skin infections present with dryness, for example, ringworm, and medications that you might be taking can be drying out your skin. We already talked about chemotherapy, oral retinoids, isotretinoin, brand name Accutane for acne. Accutane is expected to dry your skin, especially your lips, uh, but the skin does become quite dry while you are on Accutane. Also, there, but there are other oral retinoids that we use to treat other diseases. Uh, acetretin or psoriatine is used to treat psoriasis. It can leave the skin quite dry. I already mentioned diuretics in patients who have end-stage renal disease, but diuretics are also given uh, to other people who have blood pressure problems, and they can leave the skin dry. Family of medications used to treat high blood pressure called beta blockers. They typically end in alol like metoprolol, propranolol, it can make the skin dry. Statin medications definitely can impact the skin and leave it quite dry because statin medications are used to help with the uh, lipids, the blood lipids, but they can also impact your skin lipids, leave your skin dry. Atorvastatin, simvastatin, rosuvastatin. Comment below, have you ever heard of kava, K-A-V-A? -A? It is a plant in which they make a beverage out of, it's uh, psychotropic, but it can definitely cause very, very dry skin, thickened callus on the hands and feet. It can cause hair loss and swelling of the face, as well as uh, neuropathy in like the hands and feet, so like numbness and tingling. Why this happens? is thought maybe there's something in this that interferes with perhaps cholesterol metabolism or somehow gets in the way of proper barrier function. I've never seen it, um, but I have you know, seen reports of it and I think it's seen more commonly like in Australia and throughout the South Pacific, like in Fiji. Let me know in the comments if you've ever heard of kava, but yeah, it can definitely dry out your skin quite a bit. And then of course you have your environment. Like whenever we're talking about winter skincare, we always talk about how the humidity drops, the air becomes dry, you turn the heater on, it dries out the air even more, pulls water from your skin. I always give you the tip of, you know, raining in thicker creams for your moisturizers to apply to the skin after bathing to help with that, as well as running a humidifier in your bedroom at night. Excessive air conditioning can certainly make the air quite dry. Direct heat can likewise dry out the skin, like if you sit next to a space heater. Excessive bathing, like if you're bathing multiple times a day, really can do a number on your skin and dry it out. Most people are gonna bathe maybe twice a day, maybe one more time if you your occupation 
you know, you get really sweaty and dirty, you need another shower, fine. But some people really struggle with um, a fixation on excessive bathing and hygiene, and they can end up really drying out their skin quite a bit. Also, people who uh, smoke marijuana can develop something called marijuana hyperemesis syndrome. Some of you have even commented that you actually had this, because I've talked about it here and there in other videos. Something happens and it causes people to vomit cyclically, and the only thing that seems to alleviate it is to shower. And so the patients end up bathing excessively to stop the nausea and everything. As a result, they develop very dry skin. Bathing with traditional bar soap, soaps, like Ivory, Irish Spring, these are pretty harsh on the skin barrier. Most body washes, in fact, all body washes, they're gonna be something called a Sinden, um, which is much milder, gentler on the skin barrier. It can still dry out your skin, especially if you're using too much. But yeah, using bar soap really can dry out your skin. But not just cleansers for the skin, you're also gonna come in contact with detergents, doing a load of laundry, maybe you touch the laundry detergent a lot or when you load the dishwasher, or if you wash dishes by hand, this will do a number on the skin on your hands. But maybe in your occupation, you're exposed to a lot of deter detergents. Always wear protective gloves. I have a video, as a side note, all about hand dermatitis, hand eczema, and I give a lot of tips in that video. So check that one out. Anywhere where you have excessive friction on the skin can end up drying the skin out because you're just kind of eroding away at the skin barrier. It ends up losing a lot more water and can dry out the skin there. And if you bathe in hard water, this can really do a number on your skin barrier, cause a lot of dryness. Um, I live somewhere with hard water. I know a lot of you guys do, and it definitely can play a role in flares of eczema, atopic dermatitis, because what happens is hard water has a high concentration of calcium ions, and the calcium ions can interact with the, the detergents in body washes, shampoos, and, and things, and form a film of basically soap scum on on your skin that can denature the proteins in the skin barrier lead to water loss and also the calcium ions are thought to interfere with the calcium signaling that goes on in your epidermis that kind of guides normal barrier turnover. And the other thing about hard water is that it makes it more difficult to lather cleansers. Should you get a water softener? The research for getting a water softener, it's kind of a little bit mixed and sort of insufficient to say if it helps or not. Uh, the research has just been done in children with atopic dermatitis. We don't know to what extent it would apply to the general population. It seems as though it doesn't impact eczema severity, but that's not to say it can't help. In the study, I think was a only 12 weeks, so maybe it takes longer. Suffice it to say, the research on water softeners, it's insufficient, but it can't hurt. You know, if it's within your budget, it's certainly reasonable. But the other tips with hard water are to keep the shower short, which is a good tip for dry skin in general, uh, and to really be conservative with the amount of body wash that you are using to reduce that soap scum formation. And don't take excessively hot showers. Make sure you apply moisturizer once you get out. Same kind of bathing advice that we always give for dry skin, but with hard water, it's really aimed at minimizing the formation of that soap scum on the skin that disrupts the skin barrier. Dry skin is not just a cosmetic concern. Dry skin is basically a reflection of an impaired skin barrier. When the skin is dry and you have a barrier defect there and you have these little cracks, well, infectious microorganisms can get in. You're more likely to develop uh, skin infections, whether it be bacterial, or fungal. Dry skin is more prone to the sensation of itch, which can become a very vicious cycle because when you have itch, you're gonna to wanna to scratch. And scratching further disrupts the skin barrier, it leads to even more water loss, not to mention can inoculate microbes into the skin, cause colonization that further contributes to skin barrier dysfunction. So it can be a vicious cycle. And when you have dry skin, and you have to have those cracks and things, irritants and allergens are more likely to get into the skin and more likely for your immune system to decide, hey, we don't like this, and you can develop allergies more easily when you have dry skin. So yeah, that's a deep dive into the reasons behind dry skin. I, I think knowing potential root causes of dry skin can be very empowering, because like I said, a lot of these things, like thyroid disease, for example, addressing those root causes, it really can transform things for you, or just having an understanding like, okay, this is age-related, 
or you know this is related to certain exposures, medications that I'm taking, you know, maybe you can bring it up with your doctor, switch the medications around. So I really hope just understanding some of the possible root causes behind dry skin, I really hope it empowers you guys to understand your skin better. On the end slide, I'm gonna put my recent video talking about barrier creams, which can be very useful for dry skin. So check that out. But if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.